Okay, good day. Um, this is, I hope everyone's safe and well uh, and you're able to get outdoors um, and not comply. Uh, for anyone who is not awake uh, to the fake pandemic um, that they uh, forced upon us uh, to create this lockdown, um, uh, they're gearing up for the second wave um, and this is a short venting video and an example of the lies, um, complete utter lies and propaganda um, to uh, put everyone under, under submission, um, to get everyone to comply um, and it makes me sick. That is what makes me sick, not a fake coronavirus, mainstream media and the politicians and the way they're treating us. Please wake up Australia before it's too late for you to realise that you are still asleep, okay? Um, <laughs> uh, I had to get that out. Um, yeah, uh, sorry, umming a lot. Um, it's been a while. Um, I don't do these videos that often anymore. Um, yeah, trying to direct my channel in a more positive way. Um, but seriously, guys, um, if you uh, think you need to practice social distancing and wear a mask, um, then you need to wake up. Uh, just watch this um, and try not to uh, vomit. Um, yeah, it just made me feel physically ill, absolutely disgusted. Um, yeah, so it started in Victoria. Um, they blamed the riots. Uh, and considering there was rioting going on um, in every city in the country, Australia, that's where I am, for those who don't know, um, why was Victoria the only place where they had uh, a new breakout of this so-called virus? Why? Why isn't it the whole country? Um, and now they've started with Sydney. So, um, and everything's going down. Just, just watch this. This is a mainstream video. Um, throw out your TV. Uh, only, uh, like I normally just check the headlines um, of what's going on in mainstream. Uh, and that's all I need to do. I don't even need to watch the videos anymore. Um, a friend kind of uh, recommended or yeah, said that he did that. So I started doing that because watching um, the videos, just it's disgusting and it's focusing in the wrong direction. Um, yeah, uh, we need to stop focusing outwards, stop um, doing what they tell us to do. Uh, don't fight back aggressively. I uh, know it's hard to not get angry, but um, turn inwards and get with Yeshua. Um, yeah, the the one who made all things um, and stop focusing on this this outward uh, lie. Um, everything's flipped. Everything's upside down. It's all sideways. Um, yeah. So good is bad. Black is white, um, walking around, uh, walking around in public today, um, I felt like the second class citizen. Um, there's a lot of uh, not, just, uh, not just black people in the area, there's a lot of different colours, um, different, eth <laughs> I'm not good, this, good with this word, uh, different cultures um, all mixed together. And, um, yeah, uh, I just, the more I go out and about, um, the more I feel like a second-class citizen. Um, I've, I've been called a thing by a complete stranger walking past me. Um, and, yeah, just, just the behaviour is disgusting. Um, I'm so sick of hearing uh, Black Lives Matter and I Can't Breathe being yelled out in the streets. Um, I'm really sick of it. Uh, yeah, um, I'm. I don't know what to say. Um, 
I'm not meaning to offend anybody at all. Uh, um, yeah, it's just the control that everyone's under, and it's, yeah. Anyway, uh, I've been raving on. Um, stay safe out there, um, and watch this one, just one mainstream video to the end. Uh, it will give you an update on what's going on here, and if you can read between the lines, um, yeah. So, anyway, uh, love you guys. See yous. Good afternoon. Workers' unions have slammed Qantas for cutting 6,000 jobs as it deals with the fallout from the COVID-19 crisis. Pilots, cabin crew, engineers, baggage handlers and corporate staff are most at risk of facing the axe. But the collapse of billions of dollars in revenue leaves us with little choice if we are to save as many jobs as possible longer term. Many of the 6,000 job losses we've announced today are people who have spent decades here. They're people we know personally. They are people that we know for a long time. And it is not unusual to have several members of one family working at Qantas and at Jetstar. Mr Joyce, you must put these redundancies on hold. It makes no sense for you to make hasty decisions about the shape of the workforce until you know the shape of this government support. On top of those job cuts, Qantas will stand down an additional 15,000 workers for at least the rest of the year. There is huge political fallout from this, so let's get the very latest from our correspondent Fiona Willen in Canberra. Fee, good afternoon. What's the Prime Minister had to say? Well, Devena, the Prime Minister's offered his deepest regrets to Qantas workers. He says the government is considering what can be done to help the aviation industry. It has already provided $1.3 billion to the sector, uh, and Qantas workers alone have received $400 million via JobKeeper. Now, the airline's boss, Alan Joyce, had a chat with Scott Morrison last night, uh, and he asked if JobKeeper could be extended for the industry. Now, the Prime Minister hasn't committed to that, but he has indicated that more support will be provided to industries that need it. Now, JobKeeper is due to expire in September. Uh, we know that a review is currently underway. We're expecting an update from the Treasurer on July 23rd. Uh, this is what the PM said when he was asked if he would consider extending the payments for aviation workers. We are working through those issues right now. They are very complex. We know that those sectors that continue to be significantly affected will need continued support to all of the Qantas family uh, who will be hurting badly today. Uh, I extend my, my, my deepest, my deepest regrets about what has had to be announced today. Now, today the Prime Minister has actually announced support for another sector that's been badly hit. It's a $250 million package for the arts and entertainment industry. It'll include a mixture of grants and loans. What this package is about is creating the new shows, the new productions, the new performances. The government should have used today to extend job keeper to arts and entertainment workers. Our National Cabinet meets tomorrow. The Prime Minister will be pushing for the states and territories to be clear about when they'll reopen their borders in order to give certainty to airlines and events companies and so many other businesses. Davina. Big issue raised by Qantas today. OK, Fiona, thank you. A primary school in the city's lower North Shore has been shut down after a seven-year-old boy tested positive to coronavirus. The Lane Cove West Public School student was one of four new cases in New South Wales in the last 24 hours. The other three are all returned travellers in quarantine. It comes as our government issued a blunt message to Victorians wanting to travel north. I'm asking uh, Victorians, particularly those from the hotspots in Melbourne, to not come into regional New South Wales and not come to Sydney. And don't come and visit your family and friends either. And the death of an 85-year-old man at the Opal Care Facility in Bankstown in April has been reclassified as a coronavirus-related death, bringing the state's overall toll to 51. A suburban testing blitz is underway in Victoria to swab half of all of those living in 10 coronavirus hotspots over the next 10 days. And it comes as the state records 33 new cases. Here's Mark Santamartino. 
We're here in Hallam this afternoon, one of the top 10 worst coronavirus hotspots in Melbourne, where community transmission continues to be a problem. A moniker that those who live here in the southeast are either meeting with indifference or concern. I'm just going to work, going, doing what I need to do. If that's all you can do is just yeah, stay inside and make sure you're social distance. Kill or Downs and Broadmeadows have the city's worst infection rates, according to the Premier, who went on to name Pakenham, Maidstone, Albanvale, Sunshine West, Faulkner, Reservoir and Brunswick West in the top ten. We will test 50% uh, of those suburbs over the next three days. If we can do more, of course, we will. Uh, over the next 10 days. The hotspots will be a focus of a 10-day testing blitz with 100,000 people, roughly half of those living in the problem suburbs, to be swabbed regardless of whether they have symptoms or not, with ambulances and testing vans to take the test to people's doorsteps. We are throwing everything at this. People are going to be knocking on your door and they're going to be asking you to get tested. Please say yes. The news came as 33 new infections were detected in Victoria, the state's highest daily increase since the 7th of April. Six are from routine testing, seven are return travellers, 11 more are under investigation with nine associated to known outbreaks. There'll be a number of people who'll require quarantine by virtue of that. An army of hundreds of temperature checkers will be rolled out to the slopes and other school holiday hotspots in the coming weeks to try and keep community transmission rates low, with 10 new drive through testing clinics also set to open, earmarked for areas like Pakenham, Melton and Moreland.